blurred lines. Blurred lines. You see, we live in a society where we have boundaries, and boundaries keep us protected. We have boundaries of where we can go into a place and places that we cannot go. I had to uh, board an airplane today, and I was running late for my flight, and I was not going to make my flight, and they had a VIP section, and they had a coach section, and the coach section went out through the door, and the VIP section was quite empty. But I could not make my way through the VIP section, even though I tried to look my best, talk my best, right. act my best, and I tried to see my way through it, but I thought I'd play it cool and, and use my gift, which is the gift of gab, to be able to convince that TSA security guard to let me in, and guess what? He let me in, and I made my fight. I was able to cross a mountain that I really did not have access to, because I paid $59 for my ticket, praise the Lord, and I paid almost $35 for my bag. But the point is, is that there are boundaries that keep us protected. And when you cross uh, an international border, you cross the state line, you cross uh, a, a boundary. And I live eight miles from the country of Mexico. And I've frequented that place many times. And I've been scared many times. Lost many times. But thank God I speak the language. I can read the signs. I can get by. You see, the language is different. My family, my wife's family, they're all what you call gringos. And they take me on trips, I don't think because they like me, but because I'm their translator. The language is different because of me, they get the 20% discount at the restaurant. The food is different because the, the, the salsa doesn't mix well with their stomach. The, the prices are different and they take me along with me to help them translate a peso to a dollar. The buildings are different. You realize that the buildings just don't look the same and, and there may be some differences in the buildings. The Coca-Cola is different. It's all different when you step into another place and you cross an international border. The automobiles are in a different condition. I had the opportunity to visit the country of the Philippines twice, and I could not fit in what you call a jeepney. And if you are Filipino, you know what a jeepney is. It's a car that's not made for people like me. The traffic patterns are different, and and the roadways are different and you realize that things happen and the police uh, uh, respond in different ways and they deal with different uh, types of things and the police deal with, with laws within the boundaries of their city and you realize that uh, you can cross the street and cross from one city into the next and in the city that I currently minister at there is a city called there, there's a street called Mountain Avenue and if you cross Mountain Avenue on one side you are in the city of Monrovia and if you cross over you are in the city of Duarte and you realize that there are different city limits and different city lines and different city laws. The Duarte police cannot jurisdict the Monrovia laws because they have their own city lines. The FBI deals with interstate lines and the CIA deals with international lines and we realize that lines are important because they don't just keep us away from things but they keep people and things away from us. They protect us from certain things. You, because you live in the United States, have a protection because of what the lines of this state and the countries give you. And we realize that God himself is a God of order. He's a God, amen, of perfection. He's a God
Because if you're walking through a narrow path or you're walking through a narrow trail, I had the privilege of climbing half dome in Yosemite. And I don't know what I was doing because everyone else on the trip with me was in shape. And they could fit through the rocks and they could fit through the tunnels. They could fit through the creeks and I had to maneuver my way and suck it in so that I can squeeze through and make my way through the trail of the straight and narrow to make it to the top of the mountain. When you are walking through something that is straight and something that is narrow, every step you take counts. You're not going to just skip your way through it. You're not just going to uh, run your way through it carelessly, but you are going to make sure that you are taking each step and you're making it count because you are walking on a path that is straight and narrow. We live in a society that is trying to tell this generation, trying to tell this people of today that you can do what you want and that you can live in the gray areas of life Here to give you a warning that the enemy has some. 
eternal time in hell for the things he's done. And the reason why he's after you. And the reason why he's calling at you. And the reason why he wants you to walk the blurred line is because he wants you to fall prey. And he wants you to have the same type of eternal punishment and condemnation that he has. But I've got a little news for the enemy of our soul. I've got a little news for the accuser of the brethren. And that's one thing that I've got Jesus Christ in it. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his word says that his grace is sufficient for Pastor Bliss was living for God, amen, back when he was the youth director. It was the same type of God, Pastor. 
Pastor Blizzard and the miracles you saw, amen, and you still continue to see. Amen. This generation can still see them today. This generation can go to their school campus and they can say, I'm not going to walk the blurred line of deceit and sin, but I'm going to walk the line, amen, of the straight and arrow. And I'm going to see my friend receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to see my friend, amen, receive Jesus Christ and be watered out. 